Welcome back to the comments section. I'm Brett Cooper. Uh, I was just talking to Scheller and I was trying to figure out when Roe v. Wade was actually overturned because it genuinely feels like it was an eternity ago. Not because I've been so like deeply emotionally invested in this, but because of the nonstop screeching and screaming that has been going on from pro-choicers online. And I don't even want to say pro-choicers because like the pro-abortion people, because it's not really about choice anymore. It's literally just angry women wanting to kill their babies. Oh, there it is. Now, I was expecting more from their whole like summer of rage situation, but I've noticed that most of their anger has been unleashed online, which for me works out better because I get to use it as content. And if you thought that we were done with Roe v. Wade abortion content, we're just getting started. But before we get into it, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you have not already, and ring that bell so that you never miss a comment section episode. So I logged onto Twitter last night and the number one trending story was this. Women in America have hit their breaking point. Obviously I had to click on that because I am a woman. I know that because I am a biologist, obviously. And this entire article was about how Roe v. Wade being overturned was the straw that broke the camel's back when it comes to women. Here's the thread. Uh, it says, new cover. Abortion rights under attack, pandemic burnout at work and at home. I can't believe we're still talking about that. And politicians who don't care. After a series of seemingly nonstop societal attacks against American women, we have hit a breaking point. <laughs> And then the cover of Newsweek this month is The Breaking Point. American women have helped the country achieve 50 years of prosperity. Undoing Roe makes everything far more precarious. It is just idiotic when people give that like 50 year stat. It's like women have only been able to be productive in the last 50 years because they were able to kill their babies. That is the most backwards thing I have ever heard of. Like, are you just saying that mothers cannot be successful, that if somebody decides to keep their child or if they decide to give their child up for adoption, that they are less than, that they can't achieve the same as somebody who has, you know, had an abortion, which, you know, saved their life. Like all of those celebrities, they go up and do their, you know, Emmy award speeches where they're like, thank God I got an abortion. I wouldn't have been able to do any of this without it. And I wouldn't have been able to do this without employing a woman's right to choose. You need to stop. It's just idiotic. Women have been doing great since before Roe v. Wade was a thing. My God. Uh, anyway, continuing on, it says failures by the U.S. government to guarantee paid family leave or to grant working women breastfeeding protections at work are the byproduct of a system that allows for the employment and economic advancement of women without actually supporting them. Having a job has become too expensive for many women. Even before the pandemic, there were fewer women in the labor force than in 1999. The most common reason given is that they either can't find or can't afford childcare. Women often hold jobs that are essential to a functioning society, such as being a teacher or a nurse, yet these roles are poorly paid and people in them are so overworked during the pandemic that they are quitting in droves. That is true about them all quitting, but like this would just open up an entire, you know, other can of worms. But the whole gender wage gap thing has been debunked so many times. One of the biggest contributing factors to the wage gap is that women, like this article states, often go to jobs. They often gravitate towards jobs where they are making less money. And that always goes back to our psychology and our biology where women want to be in more of the like emotionally driven fields of like being a social worker, of being a teacher, being whatever. They're not going off and being engineers. And that's fine if you don't want to be. But then don't say that it's the government's problem. You're not going to make as much money if you are a teacher rather than an engineer. And then in those lower paying positions, they often ignore the fact that they are making the same amount of money as their male counterparts in those positions. The wage gap only exists in between different industries. Honestly, the author of this article seems absolutely miserable. Like, I think she needs a self-care day. She needs to stay at home, do some skincare. Maybe she needs some Nimi skincare. As you all know, Nimi is my very, very favorite skincare brand. I have been using them since January and I absolutely love them. They are 100% American made. They even source some of their ingredients from local American farms and they also stand against cancel culture and wokeness. And not only does Nimi have incredible individual products, but they have also taken the stress out of finding skincare and putting together a routine because they have assembled three individual bundles for your various needs. My personal favorite is the daily glow up routine. I use it twice a day. If you want to check them out, go to Nimi Skin skincare.com use promo code cooper for 15 percent off your entire order and for the author of this article i think you just need to stay home and do a face mask
the comments on this were absolutely unhinged, but this one just immediately stood out to me. It was literally the first under this article. This woman said, yep, we are three fifths a person. I'm sorry, what? Like I genuinely cannot tell if this person is trolling or not because she is actually equating being a contemporary woman to being a slave. When as a woman, you have more opportunities than anybody in the past. That is disrespectful. I'm not somebody that usually gets offended or gets you know sensitive about things, but that is actually disgusting. Uh, somebody else posted this stupid boomer meme and was like, the blue wave is coming in November and it's a woman. Like whose mom posted this on Facebook last night and gave them permission to put this on Twitter? Why do you think women are disengaging from the patriarchy in record numbers? No interest, no dating, no respect for men anymore. We quit. See, this is just where I get confused because the modern feminist women on the left, they have spent the last decade ripping into men, saying that men are toxically masculine, that they don't want to have anything to do with them. And now they say they, they can't have respect for them. It's like, oh my God, you've let me down. I can't have any more respect for you. Do you think men are walking around trying to get your respect now? Respect, R-E-S-P-C-T. Find out what it means to me. Somebody else said, why are conservative women so happy? This woman replied and said, because they believe if they submit, things will be easy. Except they create an environment that enables the men in their lives to f with ours. I think she would call that internalized misogyny. You ever heard of it? I'm proud of my internalized misogyny. I don't hate the patriarchy. And yes, conservative women are happier. Conservatives in general are happier people because, you know, they have good values and they prioritize family and the things that are, you know, intrinsically very important to them. Thankfully, the majority of comments under the author's tweet about this article were based as f and it was great. Like this woman said, I'm in the wrong place. I can't afford the self-pity. I'm already prone to emotional shit and rationalizing my flaws. How do y'all have the freedom or time to lose to this attitude and still count it as oppression? Don't you enjoy the struggles or find joy in victories at all? I want to be friends with this woman. Literally, how do these people have the time to sit around and write entire articles and lament about how they are so oppressed? I'm sorry. The fact that you are in a position where you can sit at your house and you can write for one of the country's largest magazines about how you are oppressed probably means that you are not really oppressed. Another woman said, there is no other country on the planet that offers a better way of life for women than America. Happy you finally managed to figure out what a woman is, even though you're not biologists. Based. Yeah, that's the one upside of this article. Apparently, this author has been able to define a woman and put us into a nice, succinct, little oppressed category. But the woman who posted this reply does have an incredibly valid point where she said that there is no other country on the planet that offers a better way of life for women uh, than America. That is absolutely true. I mean, women in Arab countries, for example, I think only 48% of them have phones. Only 25% of them work. Depression is the leading cause of illness in those countries. Most live under the male guardianship system. Like young girls are sold into marriage in so many countries around the world. Women are still stoned to death and decapitated if they decide to leave their husbands. They have no freedom. And you are sitting here on your phones in your cushy little New York apartment with your fancy little corporate job complaining about how you cannot kill your baby. I'm sorry, that is not the biggest issue in the world right now. I get that our country is not perfect and it is okay to admit that, but you are not oppressed. So maybe if you could go outside, you could touch some grass and you could find things to be grateful about, you might be happier. Just saying. Guys, we are adding new comment section content every single day, so make sure that you are subscribed to this channel and ring that bell so that you never miss a video. See you next time.